Hi there, it's me, Jake Young, back again on What the Facts, our extended look into the topics covered on WTF 101. This time around, we're looking at the horrifying, nightmarish world of sex in the animal kingdom, where love and war can sometimes be the same thing. Luckily, we have an expert on hand, on the line, to help us uh, gain a better understanding. He's a research scientist and an evolutionary biologist, Menno Skilhausen. Hey, Menno, uh, why don't you tell us about yourself? Um, so I study evolution and I work in a place called Naturalis Biodiversity Center, which is the, the Natural History Museum, the National Natural History Museum here in the Netherlands. Okay, because from the name, it sounds like, uh, I'm just going to say a mad scientist laboratory where they're trying to put shark DNA into the perfect super soldier. No, not, not last time I checked, no. So uh, you saw the episode and, can, Menno, can we talk about the antichinus? Can we please talk about the antichinus? Uh, I, I, I'm a mammal. We're mammals. We're fuzzy. We're advanced. We're like all the way up on the evolutionary chain. I thought we were supposed to be above this kind of like berserker rage, once in a lifetime mating frenzy. Like we're not salmon. How, like, how common is this among our, our fuzzy friends? Well, it, it doesn't really have to do much with fuzziness. It's more got to do with, with the, the, the kind of environment that this animal lives in. You know, they, um, there's a lot of competition between males for, for females. So all these, all these uh, males are just um, using their last energy to reproduce. And if they're able to do that, then that's success. That's evolutionary success. They got a lot of offspring and, and those, those offspring carry their genes. I mean, you kind of described the dating scene in New York and I have never, I mean, okay, a couple of times I might have like lost a limb to gangrene, but it's not like that desperate. Things that have to do with sex are, are the things that evolve the fastest. For example, in, um, you know, in, in, in uh, crane flies, there is a species that has a vibrator on its penis. Um, you know, completely ridiculous. They have a little little thing on their penis, which which like a little comb, and they scratch over it, and it produces a tone like the the middle C on a piano keyboard, and they make that tone while they're mating. So the 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 color or the tone of these males that doesn't really serve any any function. It's no use to to the females except for the fact that it's it's sexy. It's being noticed. Because it's sexy, they, these males get more offspring, and that's inherited, and that's how evolution works. So when I have children of my own, and they gain my ability to just really kill a Bruce Springsteen song on karaoke night, I've passed on my fitness to them. If, is that what you're saying? Yes, if it is not something that you learn, but if it's something that has something to do with your, with your genes, then it can be passed on to your offspring, and they can have the benefit or the disadvantage of whatever it is you do. The secret is no irony. You got to commit to Thunder Road if you want to get the deal done. So obviously, I had to look up your resume, and you have a lot of experience with gastropods, which is a whole world of weird sexual activity that we did not address on the show. Mm -hmm. So, what do they? What's like? What are part of their arsenals? Well, first of all, you got to realize that snails are hermaphrod. Many land snails are hermaphrodites, so their males are female and male at the same time. So whichever snail they meet, it, it's always a potential mate. Um, and then one of the things that snails, many, many land snails do is they have these so-called love darts. And these are sort of calcium spikes that they stick into each other uh, while they're mating. So if you're a good dart shooter, uh, you shoot it in the right way, and you fill it with a lot of hormone, then you're a successful uh, father. A topic that we covered on the show was bed bugs. Honest to God, it's a battlefield. The horrifying way that that happens. Are there are there ways that females can adapt and kind of develop their own set of weaponry? I mean, not to not to get all hashtag woke, but it seems like a lot of male driven violence in the natural world. Yeah, but there's also uh, it, it really works both ways. So often you see that there's sort of an evolutionary arms race going on. That that everything that on the male side evolves, there's some sort of countermeasure on the female side. So with bed bugs, for example, you see that the females often evolve, you know, a completely new set of genitals in the place where the male normally pierces its penis. So, so they sort of have these uh, these new, uh, basically a new vagina that that receives this stiletto-like penis, and again can then uh, control what happens to the sperm that they inject. Just to just to help me help me help me, help me clarify, like how does that give them the advantage? Well, because what what the male, of course, is is trying 
to do is to bypass the female's ability to decide what happens to his his sperm. Normally, you know, when they in, in many other insects, they the female receives the sperm and then puts it in a special pocket and then she can decide whether she wants to get rid of it or use it to fertilize her eggs and if so which eggs and how many besides bed bugs and besides snails are there any other like exceptional mechanisms at work in the natural kingdom that uh, you can think of well there's also it's it's not just a battlefield there's also a lot of uh, very sweet copulation going on in insects for example in many beetles you have uh, the, the males have these two little little uh, drumsticks or little brushes on, on either side of their penis and they use that to stroke or to drum on the on the abdomen on the, on the back side of the female during mating and that's really a kind of a courtship during during copulation so the, the males that are able to to, to drum in the in, in the most pleasurable way are the ones that that have the highest chance of having their sperm absorbed and received by the female. Oh, that's good for beetles, but when I try the drum solo from the Hawaii Five-O theme, I'm the asshole. Yeah, well, there's that too. So, uh, what got you kind of fascinated by the uh, kind of, I'll say, the less cuddly uh, aspects of the animal kingdom? You know, as I mentioned before, these, these these organs that have to do with sex they evolve faster, so that means that there's also bigger differences between species that are very closely related, and you can actually use them to identify the species with. And then, you know, when I figured that out, I started to get interested in the question of why are they so different and how, is that, how does that evolution work? And other changes I, or take more. Yeah, you can, for example, look, I mean, if you if you take any any random uh, family of, of, of monkeys, I mean, uh, you know, different species of monkeys, um, you usually can see differences in the shape of the penis, but it's the, the kidneys there, they all look, you know, kidney shape, they're all the same. It gets the most immediate results if the goal is procreation. Exactly, it's very close to to. I mean, it sits very close to actual reproduction. So if you anything you change in in the genitals will affect how many offspring you get. If I got the genetic lottery and have a super kidney, I'm like, you won't even believe the amount of liquid waste I can process. Meanwhile, if I have Dick 2.0, <laughs> that's going to immediately pay off. Yeah, there's no maybe, that's for sure. I swear to God, if high school biology was this frank and this honest, I would have done way better in high school. Uh, Mena, how can we follow your work online? Uh, are there different projects you want to tell us about? Like, you know, please plug away. Well, you can follow me on, on Twitter at, uh, at Schildhausen. Um, or you could uh, order and read my book, Nature's Nether Regions. Menno, thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate your expertise, and it is amazing, thanks to technology, that we got to have this conversation. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Well, I don't think any of us need to hear the word genitals again in our entire lives. Thanks for checking us out on What the Facts, and tune in next time on dropout.tv.